Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. Last weekend, we missed out on one of my favorite races in the cycling calendar. A race that sees the best classic riders battling it out across the hardest parkour in cycling, all for that coveted prize of the Roubaix Cobble. It's a race that really propels a rider into legendary status. That's if they win or not. Yep, you guessed it, I'm talking about Paris-Roubaix. This race is truly iconic. Dating back to 1896, it's gained a reputation of being one of the hardest, if not the toughest, one-day bike race out there. I mean, it's got nicknames like the Hell of the North, a Sunday in Hell, and I guess that sums it up perfectly. The cobble sections, or most commonly known as pave sections, are the true test. I mean, it's a long race. It sits at around 250 kilometers long, 29 pave sections, and it all makes up around 50 kilometers of pave. In wet and slippery conditions, this is a dangerous race, but it's also hard on your wrists, your hands, your neck, energy sapping for your legs, and it's bone shaking. I should also mention the pave or the cobbles don't just turn your body into something that's spent too long in the tumble dry, but it's also tough on your bikes. So riders, mechanics, and teams have adapted their bikes to make them not only faster across the pave, but also more durable and more comfortable. So let's take a look and see how the bikes have evolved in Paru Bay. Now a good place to start is the tires. Now tires have evolved dramatically over the years with more and more being done to improve the durability and speed over rough surfaces. So I reckon it's a good time to take us back a few years. Right, cue uh, the time thing. And we dropped back into around 1887. And oh my gosh, this is what the changing rooms are like. Uh, this is the only retro kit I could find. But anyway, you get the idea. Back then they were riding solid rubber tires. Yeah, a bit like the ones you saw me ride on that penny farthing. And oh my gosh, it was uncomfortable. But then again, I don't know if it was because of the saddle, not the tires. Paru Bay came about in 1896 and the pneumatic tire was invented in 1887. They found that that wide tire was quite slow and it was also quite heavy. And in the early years of Roubaix, they were riding tubular as well. This found it was helped with what well, durability and handling of the bikes. Riders are now using 28 millimeter tires, even tubeless ready, and manufacturers are going the whole hog and creating their own Roubaix specific tire. But that gets me thinking, where will this go? Could we see riders use gravel or even cyclocross tires at Paris Roubaix? And on that note, well, we did a video lately with Connor Dunn to see which one was faster. So Connor found out that the road tire was faster. Maybe not more comfortable, but definitely faster. Another big one is suspension. Now, we're not talking mountain bike suspension on a huge amount of travel. Oh no, we're talking road suspension and millimeters of travel. It was in 1991 that Greg LeMond and Gilbert Duclos LaSalle debuted RockShot's new front suspension though it did add a considerable amount of weight to the bike and it was a pain for the mechanics. It did have its advantage on the sections of pave. Fast forward to today and big bike manufacturers are still making bikes for the Paris-Roubaix, just with a lot more technology and a lot lighter. Specialized have the Roubaix, ridden by Peter Sagan, and they use RockShock. Now it has 20 millimeters of suspension in the head tube, and it's pretty simple. It is a spring in the head tube that will absorb the shock of the cobbles. Pinarello have High Ride, that they have previously used on their K-Series, but now use on their Pinarello Dogma FS full suspension. Now, what this basically is, is a load of sensors in the seat tube, and it will constantly monitor what terrain the bike is on, and it will lock and unlock the suspension on the bike automatically. And get this, it only takes one tenth of a second to lock or unlock. Crazy. So I guess there's a few of the big developments, but there's also really small ones, or small, but really effective, like double wrapping of the bar tape, creates a bit more comfort and stops a lot of the vibration. Also cushioning 
under the bar tape to help with the vibration. Lots of different things and tactics that make those bikes that little bit more comfortable over the pave sections. Now it's time for a special addition to the tech show. It's time to take a look at some of your pain caves. Right now, many of us are confined to riding indoors, so this is our way of embracing it. We've had some great submissions in, so make sure you keep uploading yours to the app and hopefully we can feature yours next week. Hold on, Manon. We want to have a look at my submission, no? Check this out. Yeah, happy with that one. Fist pump myself. Boom. Good effort there, Hank, but our viewers have done better. Check this one out from Dr. Crackers. This is a pain cave he set up a few years ago when work took over his uh, training from time to time. And it's a pretty good setup. Two bikes there with two smart turbos, a very big fan. Definitely need one of them industrial fans when you're training indoors because it does really help. Got a few screens as well, computer screen, TV screen, and an iPad. Very good setup. Well done, Dr. Cracker. We've got a great submission in from Flo Matt. Straight after buying his house and the renovating was finished, he cracked on with that pain cave. Yeah, adding uh, anti-vibration and sweat mat, IKEA shelf and a big TV with a fan in it. Can you see that bit? Genius. Some nice prints, another shelf to store my cycling bits and bobs. Love this, he's even got his medals up and he's got a lot of numbers up there, but I'm guessing over the years that is just gonna be plastered with numbers. Now there isn't a huge amount of tech being released lately and we can only put it down to the restrictions of the coronavirus. But Movistar has taken it upon themselves to get their fans engaged in designing their next race jersey. A jersey that the team will wear once the coronavirus restrictions have lifted and racing resumes. Cycling manufacturer Ale and Team Movistar have called it Design the Champions Jersey. This will hopefully keep fans engaged while there's no racing and to help raise money for the Red Cross and the Italian Civil Defence. The competition is running from the 13th to the 26th of April, so head over to the Alley website if you want to get involved. Now, I'm not sure Hank's artistic skills will be up to it, but I'm sure yours will. Now, it's been a tough time for manufacturers out there, but I've got some good news for you. A silver lining, maybe. Yep, Orbea is said to reinstate their manufacturing activity as of the 14th of April with this statement. We will resume operations at our production plants while complying with the maximum health and hygiene measures established by the competent authorities. It's great to see them back in action and taking those extra steps to stay nice and safe. Now it's time for Screw Around Upgrades by Upgrades, where you submit upgrades that you've done to your bikes or cycling lives to win the ultimate prize, a GCN cap. So before we move on to this week, let's take a look at last week's results. So we had Aaron's budget commuter build and Mark's MTB to gravel bike conversion. And the winner with 61% is Mark's MTB to gravel bike conversion. So Mark, please send us your details on Facebook and we'll get the cap out to you. We've got two great submissions this week and I'm gonna kick you off with the first one sent in by Erwin Schwitt. He's a 40 year old Empo. I mean, it looks in pretty poor repair, doesn't it? The frame looks pretty battered. Bars look awful. The saddle, well, that looks like it's been ridden by someone wearing shorts made out of sandpaper. Wheels are in poor repair. Rubber on those tires look pretty awful. And it needs a lot of doing to it. Look at it, insane. Beautiful red paint, oh. I love it. I mean, this does look like it's absolutely a brand new bike. But who's he up against? Because that is a very nice bike. Well, he's up against M Bates' 1989 Trek 1000. Now, this was well, going to be a winter project, but he's turned it into a quarantine project. He stripped that aluminium frame, repainted it, added so uh, upgraded that seven speed Suntour Edge drive chain with a square taper bottom bracket to that 10 speed Shimano 105 with an Altegra R60 threaded bottom bracket. Replaced the seven speed downtube shifters with Shimano Durace 10 speed downtube shifters. 
He's upgraded those old Mavic wheels and bought in some new Halo Retro wheels. What do we think of that? Oh, it's a tough one this week. I mean, I don't know which one I would go for, but luckily it's not up to me. No, it's up to you guys. So make sure you vote over on the GCN app. Now it's time for the bike vault, my favorite part of the GCN tech show, as you all know. And if you are new to the bike vault, it is basically where you send pictures of your bikes in and I vote if they're nice or super nice. And if they're super nice, the bell gets rung and they get put into the bike vault forever and ever and ever. First up, we have Corey Blackstock 3540 with this very nice looking factor. Factor 1 V2 um, in a nice metallic red uh, with Shimano Durace Di2 black ink wheels. Very nice looking building in the background. That is, that's a good backdrop for this bike. <gasps> the valves aren't lined up. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay, moving on. Valves aren't lined up. But we're in, are we in Biggie Smalls? Hang on, I'm gonna take a closer look. Oh no, I don't think we're in Biggie Smalls. The crank's in line. Nice black handlebar tape, black saddle, nice bottle cage, black bottle, nice deep rims. I mean, okay, it is a stunning looking bike, good backdrop, but the valves aren't lined up. We're not in Biggie Smalls. I'm sorry, it's a nice. It's a very, very, very nice nice. But it's not a super nice, it's a nice. Next up in the bike vault, we have this. This is the CN Tower, the world's ninth tallest freestanding structure. It's coming in at 553.3 meters high. Oh, no, no, bike, bike vault, sorry. Um, so this is in from Mika Hens, and this is a Noah Ridley SL disc uh, from 2017. We've got some Ultegra group set on there, DT Swiss wheels. Um, tan sidewalls are very nice. Biggie Smalls, cranks in line. Valves are lined up. We've left the saddlebag on though. Oh, I mean, it's nice. It's nearly, nearly a super nice, but I'm gonna say a nice. If the saddlebags were off, that would have been a super nice. Very close. I mean, you can try again next week. Right, next we've got this one in from. James K656 in the Lake District. Very nice backdrop again in the Lake District. Um, this is a Look 795 Blade RS with Shimano Ultegra fast forward wheels in a nice matte black. Matte black everything, tan sidewalls, Pirelli tires. Um, cranks are lined up. Gonna take a closer look for the valves because my eyes aren't the best. Valves are lined up, valves are good. Very nice uh, cockpit on that bike, nice black handlebar tape, black saddle. First super nice of the bike vault this week. Well done, James. Next, we've got this one in from Sir Jim Smith. Um, so he sent in this single speed Mercian Super Vigorelli Reynolds 853 from 2007 with some really nice French blue paint. And I think the blue goes really well with the brown handlebar tape and saddle. I do quite like brown handlebar tape and brown saddle on retro looking bikes. I think, and a very nice background on a very nice day. I'm gonna give this a super nice. Right. On to the last bike in the bike vault this week, and we have this one in from Kikoro 1906. And this is a specialized Alice Sprint from 2018 with Shram Red ETAP zip wheels. Right, lovely looking background, lovely bike, but we're not in B Smalls. The cranks aren't lined up, the valves aren't lined up. The saddle bag, it's a neat looking saddle bag, nice small saddle bag, but you could have taken out for the pictures and the lights. So for that reason, it's just a nice, but lovely picture, a lovely bike. So that's it for the bike vault this week. Remember, if you do disagree with my judgments, please head over to the GCN app where you can have your say on all these bikes. And don't forget to keep submitting pictures of your bikes so we can feature them in next week's tech show. 
If you do want to support our channel, you can do so by subscribing and you can click the bell icon if you haven't already. And if you want to get your hands on a splendid t-shirt like this one, you can head over to the GCN shop. Right, that's all for this week. Catch you next week.